So you're a pretty funny guy, and you've been streaming for a while now, and you feel like you're not sure why people aren't watching you. Maybe because people come into your channel, and your audio sounds like this. In this guide, I'm going to show you things I've done to make your audio go from this to this. In this guide, I'm going to show you the things that I've done through Streamlabs OBS or OBS to make your audio sound much better for free. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to open up OBS and we're going to have a look at our mic slash auxiliary. Mine here is named mic slash auxiliary 2. And we're going to press this little cog here and go towards filters. Now in the filters, we're going to met with a few things here. Um, we've got a little plus sign down the bottom that you're going to be able to add things. Now, you've got things that come with OBS, but I'm going to be showing you guys something called rear plugs. They are VST plugins that allow you to set up your audio with a more visual guide that makes it a little bit more understandable and you can fine tune it much better. The first thing we're going to do is head over to rearplugs.com or that's called reaper.fm. Um, and I'm going to put the link down in the description and you're going to download this the 64 or whatever bit operating system you have for me It's 64 bit. I'm going to download this and we're going to head inside and these are the VST plugins that I would recommend you start with So you just apply and agree and install all the ones that it comes with Because these are more than enough for anything that you would need in your audio Find out your display, uh, your destination folder, choose the one that is accurate to you. Um, the problem is I already have this installed, so this won't actually apply to me. So now you guys downloaded and installed rear plugs, I want you guys to go to back to OBS and we're going to have a look at a few things here. The first thing we're going to do is press the cog like I showed earlier and then go filters. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to turn every single one of these off just so my voice sounds a little different and you guys can get a feel for what my audio would sound like with all of these off. So I'm gonna slowly turn these guys off one by one and you're gonna see I'm gonna turn my gain off so I'm gonna be quieter. EQs, it's gonna be a little bit muddier, compressor, noise suppression and noise gate. And the first thing you're probably noticing is there's a little bit more background noise. If I was to move my drink, or touch my keyboard, you guys would hear it. So the first thing we're gonna be setting up guys today is the VST plugin called NoiseGate. Now it doesn't have to be named NoiseGate, but it helps to have it named that. And we're gonna to go towards rear gate standalone here and open plugin interface. Now don't worry too much about the fact that I've only got one line here when I'm speaking. If you looked at this at home, you'd have two. Um, if you have a stereo microphone, if you have a mono, it'll just be one. So what I want you guys to understand here is that line when I'm talking is not the idle background noise, but I want you guys to make your room as loud as you want it to be or how loud it usually is. And if you have a mechanical keyboard to press the key. Now I'm going to go quiet here and we're going to see what the ambient noise is in my room. Alrighty, so what we do here is after having a quick look, I have realized that my keyboard and everything else in, com in comparison to my room here is generally when I start speaking, this peaks over so my voice wouldn't clip and that's where my noise gate is going to sit. So basically if I go quiet, my room idles below that and even if I was to accidentally knock something or move or press my keyboard, no one is going to hear it. So that's the first part of this video that we're going to cover. The second plugin and probably one of the most important is noise suppression. Now noise suppression is something that I can't stress to you guys how important it is. I'm going to crank the hell out of my fan and you guys are going to understand why. So this is with my fan blowing at me with full pelt right now. This is on max. I never run my fan like this anyway. But for the purposes of this video, I will. Now we're going to go ahead and add. Now we're just going to use the default one because I find this is more than sufficient. So we're going to press OK. Sorry, the name was in, in use. So here we have noise suppression. Now as you're noticing already, my voice does sound a lot cleaner. But if my room was to be more aggressively loud, we can just simply just drag this towards the right hand side. 
and make it even more aggressive. And if my room is, you know, not so bad, I'm going to drag it to this side. The default 30 I find is pretty good as a starter point. Sometimes when you're streaming, you get very, very, very loud. And the reason for this is you sometimes you're just excited, but you need to be ready for that. And one way you could be ready for that is by having a compressor. So we're going to add one here called a VST plugin called compressor. And we're going to add and go down to the drop down. We're going to look at here called rear comp standalone. It's the first one here. And it's very similar to the noise gate. Now the beauty of this and the reason I told you guys to download these is because the normal uh, compressor does not give you any sort of visual aid and it's quite hard to understand. But basically what a compressor does summarized is when you get very very loud it takes your voice and it compresses it into a signal and basically summarized it stops it from clipping and hurting the people at home ears who are listening to you get very very loud. So what I want you guys to do here is to watch this green bar. Like I said earlier, if you have a stereo mic, it'll be both green bars. And I want you to get very, very, very loud. How loud you would normally get in the stream. And then find out where it kicks in when you start to get quite loud. So it sits about usually about there for me when I start yelling. I don't think it's going to be any worse than that. Alright, so what I want you guys to do with this compressor is I usually leave the attack on zero, release on 100 milliseconds, and then I drag my ratio to a 4 to 1 is usually the sweet, sweet spot for me. So the fourth part of this video is something that you don't have to do, so if you don't want to do this, you can skip this part, but it's just something that cleans up your vocals just that tiny bit more, and this is just going to be a quick run through of what an equalizer is. Now this is going to be a little shallow for what I can cover in this video for the sake of time. But we're going to add another VST plugin called EQ. And basically EQing is cutting off different frequencies of your mic and what it's picking up. So I want you guys to go to add to the rear EQ standalone here and open plugin interface. Now we're not really going to cover everything about an EQ and everything uh, how to detect different frequencies in your voice that you find offensive and so on and so forth by boosting them and listening. Um, it's a little bit of a long process but I want you guys to go here and add one called a high pass filter and I want you guys to add it to about 60 here. Um, and the reason I believe this is super important is because basically what this does is it adds a curve that basically gets rid of your voice and some of the areas that are really really low that aren't really real parts real parts of your voice that just add muddiness to your vocals by doing this basically you cut off some of the frequencies that are very very low and it adds a much nicer crisp sound to your vocals and something that you can also do if you want to go even more in depth is add another band, add this band all the way down to the end, usually around the 20k mark. And then you're going to add yourself a low pass filter and you're going to do the same thing as we did here. And I usually sit mine at 21,000, but 22 works as well. Or somewhere, usually a sweet spot. Um, not a lot of mics actually get these frequencies and basically what this does is it basically gets rid of some of the high pitch whine that comes with some microphones. So on that note, we're going to finish up this video here. If this helped you in any way increase your audio quality for your stream or your YouTube, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, I stream six days a week on Twitch. Feel free to swing by and ask me anything you want. And as always, happy streaming.